Hi guys, Mike from We Build Stuff. Today we're gonna start on add in your decorative tea molding, LED lighting for behind your upper artwork, wiring a rear power switch, adding fans or ventilation, installing a secret on off button, special artwork on the sides, and finally finished, delivered, done. This is the final video in the series. I hope you enjoy. It's time to move on to tea molding. This is what gives it that final fancy look. You can buy fancy tools to do this, but I'm doing it with just a hammer, an X-Acto knife, and a small set of diagonal cutters. Every time I reach a corner, I usually have to snip a little bit of the spine out, and that lets me wrap around the corner without getting some weird bulgy mess on the outside of the tea molding Now, you don't have to cut off everything, even though you see me cutting it all off. You can just do small notches instead, take a little, like, triangle shapes out of it, and it tends to fit pretty good. It does stretch. So while I've never tested it, I'm sure that this system can run Woody Woodpecker as well for the Game Boy Color. So here you can see where I have a very slight curve, so I'm not cutting everything out. But those little notches will allow it to stretch easier, and it, uh, those spines really do grip in there where I routed out for the T-molding. Now, I was originally gonna put backlighting on this arcade, but I found that those strips behind it just didn't look cool. So we only did the LED panel behind the upper marquee. I basically just glue gunned that thing down to a piece of MDF, which I mounted behind the artwork. I got this on Amazon, and it came with a remote controller, and as you uh, may have remembered earlier, there's an IR receiver that is just below the monitor. There's a small hole there. So is the arcade done? No, not yet. I still have more things I want to do. I have an IEC 320C14 socket that I picked up on Amazon, and I'm going to wire it to a power bar so that I can have power to all my stuff on the inside, but the outside looks clean. I'm using insulated quick connectors to prevent any sort of metal touching something that it's not supposed to and causing a short circuit, and these just snap onto the back of the power socket. Now that's my three for the power, I have a little LED switch on the front and I want that to light up. So I need to run these little mini jumpers in a certain order to make that happen. Now you're always gonna to wanna to check with your wiring diagrams depending on what hardware you are using, but I will show it on the screen for what diagram I use to make this work. There's also a fuse that didn't come with it and I had to buy that separately. You will notice that the yellow connectors are not insulated. I did end up switching those out and putting in proper insulated ones, but this is all I had on hand to fit those specific little connectors. Temporarily, I wrapped some electrical tape around it just to make sure they don't touch. So here you see the fuse, it just pops in, and there's also room to put a spare one, but I don't think you're going to need it if you wire everything correctly. Now it's time for a little test. Will it work? Of course it will. Now, be aware. Don't plug in stupid things into stupid places. Hmm. So I do find these sockets give a really nice clean look to the back. All you gotta do is flick it on and off, and if you really wanna change anything else on the inside, then open up the door and then change something on the inside. Now if you're worried about things getting a little spicy on the inside with all those electronics, you should set up some sort of fan system or at least drill a hole in the back to let air flow. 
I'm going to mount these in such a way that one is going to suck air in and one is going to push it out as an exhaust. That, in my mind, should allow it to circulate. Now, you could probably figure out a better place to mount these. Maybe put one up top, one at the bottom. I just put them side by side because it looked clean, and I think it's going to be okay. When I disassembled this, the bolts that it came with were not going to be long enough for what I had planned. So I had to purchase eight more bolts, and I kept them all to be the same size, the 10x24s, and just mounted them to the inside. But the grill on the outside looks pretty cool though. These nylock nuts so nothing comes loose. Now, I have never been a master of cable management, especially if you can't see it. That's just my personality. But I did try to make my thing look kind of clean. So busy today. Got most of the cable management figured out. There's a lot of cables, so there's a lot to manage. But the big thing was tying them down so that they kind of stay in place. That's just the uh, intake and exhaust fan, powered by USB, which is just plugged right into the television. I got this mounted here, lots of space for extra, but I have an expansion here because of these large ones here. I'm really excited to get this thing going. It's almost finished. Tomorrow I will be adding the additional T-molding to there and the artwork up front on the marquee. Now I'm going to use some real precision measurement here and just poke a pencil through the holes and then screw it in. These parts probably will not come on and off too often, so I'm not bothering to use bolts or T-nuts. I'm just using some short screws. There are very many different types of artwork you can use for your marquees. I based mine on what the sponsor of this video wanted, the person who was funding this project. They wanted an arcade theme with a little bit of Mickey Mouse on it. All of my first arcade projects had lock and key on the back. The problem was I kept losing the keys, so I've switched to using magnets. So one of the next steps I'm going to be doing is adding an external power switch to the Odroid XU4, just in case maybe it needs to be hard reset or rebooted, or maybe it's just not turning on, and you don't wanna open the back of the panel a whole bunch of times to do that. So easiest way is we are going to take these wires and I'm plugging them into pin number one, and then pin number 12. You can see a picture here of what that does. So pin number one, looks like you're getting this, and pin number 12, P-W-R-O-N, I'm assuming that means power on. So when I take these two, I'm just testing it with some basic cables. If I bring those two together, it's gonna turn it off. If I click them together again, it'll turn on. So I'm gonna wire in another arcade button and mount that near the panel. Those are in pins number one and 12, and it doesn't matter which wire is in which. This is going to an extension here that I have stuck onto a micro switch so that when I click the button, it should turn on. Now it's not plugged in. I'm not gonna do that until I uh, install it. And I have a very small hole over there. Well, a one and one eighth hole to be exact. So that on the front of the machine, if you ever need to turn it on, you can't see it. But if you look underneath, there'll be a little button you can press for the O-Droid for power down to power off. So if you look really carefully, you can now see that that micro switch is back there. So let's plug this thing in. Make sure these are away from the fan. Now it's probably just going to power on its initial time. Probably boot up. But now by using the button, I should have complete control over when that happens. So let's just wait for this to boot up. 
So that came on. Let's press that button. Let's see what happens. So it looks like, there we go, it shut down. So let's test it again, press the button. Give it a moment, let's see if it sends a signal there. There we go. So now we have a, basically it's a momentary switch. Just, just the same as any of the arcade buttons. Plugged into pins number one. So it starts at, goes at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, which is right there. All right, done. The final request by the person funding this project was some Mickey Mouse style artwork. So I ordered these big stick-on stickers from Amazon. This is probably the kind of thing you'd put into a kid's room on the wall or something. And it worked out almost right, maybe the first or second time around. Wow, wasn't that magical. So the full-size arcade is finally finished. Everything is done. So let's do a little overview of this thing. We have a backlit marquee. It has a, a little RGB controller that allows it to scroll through different things. There's a remote control. And the remote control has a little infrared receiver down in there if you want to change things. Uh, we've got a set of speakers. These are from Amazon, and so is the amplifier that goes with it. Pretty decent quality. The buttons, uh, I went with ball tops, and I personally, these are just a fan of these style buttons for me. I don't really like the LED light up ones. These seem to be a little bit tougher. Everything is mostly held together. Bolts and T-nuts. So these are number 10 by 24 with matching T-nuts. The reason that I designed that way is if we want to open it up and make changes. And this is also just kind of the style that I have adopted. It's built out of three quarter inch MDF for pretty much every single panel. Finished off with some nice three quarter black T-molding. Front panel has been left blank and is able to be unscrewed, bolted on and off uh, for future changes if needed. Artwork kind of inspired uh, kind of a Mickey Mouse theme that it was commissioned by someone and that was the style that they were looking for. Let's go around to the back. The rear, nice and simple. No random things to really catch on. Again, everything is held on with bolts. Again, number 10 by 24. One single on off switch to control the power for the whole machine. It has some cooling. These are just powered by USB. Let's open this up. Held together with a little magnet. Okay, so on the inside we have a 32 inch screen. This was just bought at a local big box electronics store. Any screen will do. Just depends on what size. I built mine around this 32 inch screen. The main processor is an Odroid XU4. I have some USB controllers, or USB encoders, sorry, uh, plugged in for my buttons and joystick. You can't see them because they are actually kind of glued down. I can kind of see the corny bit there, that little red light. And I have a little Wi-Fi dongle so that this thing can have network access. I personally prefer to plug in a uh, Ethernet, something like this. I find the transfer speeds are a little bit quicker. It's kind of a mishmash of power cords just because these power bricks were so large and I couldn't fit them all on one here. So this is gonna do just fine. Uh, the main power here, nice LED switch which is good. TV remote for making changes to the television if needed. That's the controller for the RGB LEDs which you can kind of see making the rounds there. Now those dots that you see, that's just the reflection from the panel. I can't really get my camera in there to show that. You see the speakers? These are nice, just little quick connects that come on and off in case you want to make changes, swap them out. You could solder them if you want to. But I think it's a fairly clean, clean build. Uh, the style that I went for holding the TV on, 
is fairly simple, like I've done in some of my other videos. It's just blocked on. On the other side of this bolt, behind here, is a T-nut. This piece of pine is glued and nailed to the, uh, the screen support here, so it's not going anywhere. This is very strong. There's two on the bottom as well. Inputs on the TV are just HDMI, and there's an, the headphone out, which goes to the amplifier. If you wanted to, you could just use the television's speakers, but I wanted to have exterior control. What other interesting stuff do we have? Not a whole lot. This is a fairly simple build. It took a lot of time since this is my first time designing one like this. I designed this from scratch in AutoCAD and then on paper and just kind of back and forth until I found a design I liked. I didn't go after a specific cabinet design. I kind of looked at some side views and found what I liked. So, there it is. So while I know everything works, it's still fun to put this on and do some quality control testing of all the parts. I'm happy with the way that turned out. I might have resized some of the art a little bit, but overall, I think it looks pretty sweet. I love the fact that you can program the LEDs to change colors and pulse and all that stuff, even subtly. But I still want to make sure that everything works 100% before we pass this off to its new owner. Come on, Arthur. So, to do that move for you. Ends of an artist. <laughs> I, I should have moisturized. Oh no! I'm almost there though. I think I feel it. James Bond. Just run over oh, he's already got a rocket. We know who's gonna win this one. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> Come on, the cool thing about these arcades is if a part breaks, you can take it off and replace it. All those little micro switches do have a lifespan but they're all very easily user replaceable. I mean, if you've built this, you can probably replace anything. I love Pokemon, yeah. Bye bye. There we go. So you made it through that entire series. Thank you so much for those of you who watched the whole thing. I really hope that it was helpful. And uh, you know, leave a like, subscribe, ask questions, leave comments, try to help other people. Uh, that's what my channel is really all about: is hopefully inspiring others to just build stuff. Anyways, thank you so much. Uh, I originally built that arcade back in 2018 and I kind of just got to editing it now. So about a five year, four to five year difference. Uh, that's all it. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.